hello, my lovely people, and welcome to another day in the life of a witch, a witch vlog, where I'll take you along through my day. Let's first see what's on the agenda for today. So today's Lucia Day, which will also in some little ways give the inspiration for this entire day or set the theme for this entire day. If you have looked at my Instagram yesterday, you will already have read about all the mythology and background and cool and creepy customs around that day. But now I will give you a little recap of that entire spiel in case you missed it. So Saint Lucia is basically a Catholic saint. And as with most Catholic saint days, it was established in order to combine the pagan traditions with a new Christian faith. So Lucia is basically the queen of light and it's still very much celebrated in Sweden. For example, you might have seen it with the white dresses and red ribbons and the candles on the hats that um, the girls wear. And it falls on the 13th of December. And that is not a coincidence because back in the times, back before the Gregorian reform of the calendar in 1500 and something, the winter solstice actually was celebrated on the 13th of December because that was the longest night. Here in Bavaria, we do have a couple of very grim traditions for that day. And there you can really see how the figure of Lucia was morphed into the goddess Holder or Freya by the people. But today we want to focus on the bringing the light part of the story with that. And I just feel I could do with a little light today. So since the weather is absolute sh we are going to spend the morning doing a little baking project and I wanted to make something traditional for the day. So we're making Lussekater, which is a Swedish speciality for the day. It's basically sweet little saffron buns and that word translates into Lucy's cats, which is also a fun little giveaway that the figure of Lucia used to be the goddess Freya, because as you might know, if you follow a pagan path, Freya's chariot is pulled by two cats. <laughs> let's get into the kitchen, let's get baking.
Alright, so we finally ventured out, even though it's ugly outside. It's ugly. Okay, I said it. And all the snow is gone, and I'm super sad about that. And I keep asking Alexa when it will snow again. She keeps lying to me. We do have a very strained relationship at the moment. Anywho, I can't help but feeling a little bit disappointed at the moment. And that is due to the fact that my partner was supposed to come back the 17th of December. Obviously that's not happening, so he will stay in Spain until February or March. And Shermi just revised its lockdown laws, so I can't see my family, my parents or anyone else <laughs> for the holidays. I mean, that's all super important and I understand why that is. However, I still can't help but feel a little bit sad about it and at the same time then I feel like guilty you know for having those feelings even though I know you know they're still valid however now obviously I don't want to complain because <laughs> I mean we have a roof over our head and we have food and we are healthy and that's the most important thing I should feel grateful but I still you know I still feel a little bit sad that this one's first Christmas that he might you know actually like actively participate will not be happening and yeah I think we all deal with a bit of like sadness and disappointment at the moment so if you also have something that you have negative feelings about at the moment and it doesn't have to be anything major um, feel free to share it in the comments and we can all be miserable together <laughs> anyhow um, a couple of years ago I found this poem that is actually quite nice um, to remind you that all your feelings that you have are basically just guests in your mind and they come and they go and you should greet all of them and let all of them in and any of these guests can bring something to the table so to say and I will just use this walk to remember this poem and yeah, when I'm, when I'm coming back home, I hope I feel a little bit more settled with my feelings and then I will find a witchy way <laughs> to, to help that uh, feeling along. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if there are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, greet each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes, because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. We are back home, baby snapping, and I have a much clearer head. And actually, when we went home, the the blanket of clouds actually opened up and showed a tiny little bit of blue skies. And I did find that so beautiful and such a great end to my walk. And now I came up with an idea of how I can help myself <laughs> when I get those feelings again. And 
those feelings that are really not productive they're just dragging me down and they're really not good to spiral around so usually in this kind of situations i would do a grounding exercise and i thought um i want to bring actual light to the darkness so to say so i'm going to do some candle magic and what i want to show you is what i call a elemental candle because it has all of the elements in it and they're in nice balance and how I work with elements is that I take inspiration from them and from the energy they bring with it like fire for example can be very wild and very forceful um, water can be that too but water can also be calm and very go over the flow it really depends on what I need so at the moment I mostly need grounding and I do connect that to the earth so the things that will go into my candle will be mostly related to that element but I will explain more about that while I'm actually crafting the candle. Now I want to share with you the general idea of it. I have this lovely little mason jar and I'm going to fill it with different things then fill it up with water and then put a little bit of oil on top and then I'm going to put these floating candlesticks in it. You can buy those online. I think they're also called like Jewish candles. I think they're used for Hanukkah as well for the floating lights. And that candle is actually amazing because it's really clean. It doesn't pollute the air while you're burning it like a lot of like scented candles for example do. So it's actually not harmful to your health at all which is amazing. And um, I want to use it in like grounding meditation. So I have something to focus my eyes on and that will help me with getting in the mindset of everything will be all right, everything is okay, and I feel grounded in myself. I do have some moss that I collected in the forest. The forest is a place where I always feel very calm and very relaxed and very at peace. <laughs> this is a stone that I found on my last holiday on a camp trip in a Danube next to a really nice monastery. And it is, if you put it in the water, it's actually yellow. Um, so it does cheer me up and it also holds a grounding element for me. So those little evergreens I just took on our walk because for me they symbolize hope. I will cut this orange up into slices to symbolize the sun. So for me that's like positivity again and warmth. And for the rest I just have some personal this and that in it <laughs> that I'm gonna throw in it. So how I would then use that candle is to when I find the need or when I find the time to sit down to do a little grounding meditation I would just light it and hold it and really look at it at all the different elements and get those positive memories get these little bits of hope and just remember what every ingredient symbolizes and means to me. And that way it really helps me process like emotions and find that inner peace again.